Happy Bowtie Friday. I'm Austin Griffith. I'm here with Kevin, the Sultan of Shil Owaki. We're going to talk about public goods. We're going to talk about YOLO building. We're going to talk about socks. Let's let's get into it. So the first thing I want to know is just like, what brought you into the space? Like how how did you get into the space and why? Hey Austin, what's up? <laughs> oh man, I like I feel like I need to like level up my energy level to keep up with you. But is, how do you do? I like a, I like a, a robot learning to approximate charisma here. <laughs> Approximate Ethereum, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> immutable, transparent financial systems. Yes, um, that's that's great. Yeah, I'm I'm pumped for. I'm here for it. it's Friday. I'm excited for that. We launched Gitcoin Dial this week, but um, yeah, it's been a long journey here. I got into the space in some ways 12 years ago when I started building web startups. I quit my corporate job and and went through TechStars and learned how to build build stuff. Um, built a online dating website from 2008 to 2013, which is a fun way to spend my 20s. Um, and then just like built tech startups ever since then. In 2017, I got I got hooked on Ethereum and I just really liked the idea of programming our values into our money and trying to figure out what we could do with that. Built like four or five different prototypes of different applications and Gitcoin was the one that stuck, was the one now I was able to right? convince Joe Lubin time? to fund. Yeah, at that time, well, the mission has always been to grow and sustain fund open source, but bounties was the mechanism which we started with in 2017. Yeah. And I kind of want to come back to bounties, but uh, eventually mm. there were like you got to Gitcoin grants. And and I think that was one of the bigger things that took off. But also like mm. the Gitcoin R&D, you started yeah. you started this little R&D thing that was going to be for prototyping and, and rapid stuff, which kind of yeah. was an excuse to kind of get me in working with you. And that's kind of totally. my my introduction to the space. Right. Like I got into this space same way, like building weird things like, hey, can I can I get rich doing this? Like, you know, like maybe yeah. the not not the best. Get a way to get in, but then you like you fall in love with the community, you fall fall in love with the technology, and then R and D kind of came around, and I started building random shit with you, and that's kind of uh, where we totally. collided. Yeah, uh, and I then, think we made oh, a yeah. uh, Gitcoin Gitcoin Labs was what we called it, um, and it was Gitcoin.co slash Labs. It's now on hiatus after our friend <laughs> and colleague Austin Griffith left Gitcoin. Uh, we should probably just like remove this or retire it at some point because I don't know if it'll ever come back. Maybe it will. I don't know. We could talk about that later. But but yeah, uh, super thankful that you were built. I think it was tools for busy developers is what we were calling it back then. You did lots of great stuff on meta transactions and UIs for Molux and counterfactual instantiation. It was cool stuff. It was, yeah, it was a lot of fun, like little quick builds. That uh, mm -hmm. that Ethereum and emerging economies was a lot of fun. That really brought, bought the, brought the burner wallet. The uh, burner wallet, front. yeah. Yep, yep. That was a good one. So, all right, let's talk about Bitcoin, Gitcoin DAO, Gitcoin DAO, and and even like the delegation. Like, what's what's about to happen? What do you what do you see kind of in the next couple of months? Are you multitasking? Quit multitasking. I'm not. I'm pulling up a. <laughs> okay. I'm pulling okay. up a demo of what okay. we're going to talk Dope. about. Sounds perfect. <laughs> I appreciate that you keeping me on a short lease, Austin, because <laughs> you're right. the number That's two right. delegate in Gitcoin That's DAO. Right. That's no, right. I can't yeah. have you slacking. I have like point three <laughs> governance over you. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Gitcoin DAO is the vessel through which we want to uh, imbue our mission. Uh, the mission is, of course, to grow and sustain open source software. We realized that a company was limited in what it could do. If that was a global mission, we should have a global vessel that everyone could participate in equal footing on. And so the DAO is going to be sort of the, the primary vessel through which we get to the quadratic lands, which is the promised land where public goods are well funded, where there's digital democracy. And uh, the Gitcoin DAO is one of the vessels that is going to take us there. And GTC, which is the governance token of Gitcoin DAO is what we launched this week. So we had an airdrop experience where a user could come in and do a proof of knowledge, and then they could do a proof of use, which is basically just like they have to delegate their governance rights to someone. Um, and then they could receive their tokens. And only after they've proven their knowledge and their usage of the token, do they get their governance rights. And I wanted to just double click on the proof of use because we are the first a uh, delegated liquid democracy project to make people delegate before they get their tokens. And as a result, we have a much wider distribution of people who have actually delegated. And hopefully that sets the DAO off in a good starting direction from a governance perspective. And Austin is the, I think Trent, Trent from the EF is number one and you're number two uh, community like protocol politician. Can I call you protocol politician? 
<laughs> oh, I don't know. A, a million other things going on. So the the it was really really clever the way you set up that uh, that claim to also be kind of like looped into delegation. So you kind of had to delegate. You had to learn about the token. Uh, the where was I going? Oh, the the thing that was confusing was the drop was a little bit different than one that I was used to, where it would just go to an address. It was more like it went to a Gitcoin account or a GitHub account, right? It mm. was based on your GitHub account, and then you guys dropped to that. Yeah. Is that right? And and so I think there was a little bit of confusion there. That probably is there a TLDR for totally. that confusion and how to kind of alleviate? Yeah. That? Uh, well, first I have to plead guilty. We are centralized right now. We are a web 2.5 <laughs> flat application that is like, I call it web two because it's like web two UX, but it's crypto aware. And because of that, everything in Gitcoin land is tied to an account, which is stored on a database that the Gitcoin company runs. And so because of that, the airdrop experience was tied to your Gitcoin account, which is tied to your GitHub account and not to an Ethereum address. And so that's nice in a way that you don't have to go through and sweep all your private keys or anything like that to get the airdrop. But uh, it is also, you know, not the long term direction that we're going to work on. We actually have uh, we actually have a work stream around decentralizing Gitcoin and rebuilding the tech stack to be more credibly neutral and more decentralized. But for the purposes of the airdrop and going from Web 2 to Web uh, 3, the the Web 2 experience was was sort of the jumping off point. But yeah, uh, you should have tokens uh, associated with your Gitcoin account is the TLDR. Yep, perfect. Okay. And, and uh, basically you go to gov.gitcoin.co to participate. And you go mm. to gitcoin.co slash quadratic lands, or even like, was there a quadratic lands.com or something? Yeah, like we that? have quadratic lands.com, and oh. that'll send oh. the token. We could have called it the Gitcoin token distribution experience or something, but quadratic lands just sounds cooler. So that's oh, yeah. what it's called. Yeah. And you were hyping it. You were you were doing these weird tweets where it was just like, <laughs> I'm hanging out in the quadratic land, getting weird. <laughs> it was <laughs> basically like, no just like, yeah. Yeah, it was just basically posting vaporwave or like rainbow beams and set, calling it the quadratic land. But it was there was a greater meaning, and that's that this launch was coming, and we're actually trying to. So if we meme it, they will come. The quadratic lands is more like I just want Ethereum to be more than just a decentralized casino. Like, what if we build a better world with this technology? And the quadratic lands is just a meme, but it's it's also the promised land to me at least. So let's talk about the regen meme, degen versus regen. Yeah. I feel like that plays into it. The totally. the degen first of all the degen is sort of like the degenerate uh, DeFi uh, gambler, gambler right yeah, yep, yeah 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 so what is regen that's the opposite of that okay it's uh it's someone who's using Ethereum for the public good for the community good and so there's this concept called bentoism and basically it says that you can build a financial system and you can build incentives that are focused around not just what's good for you in instant gratification right now but also what's good for you in the in in the future um and what's good for us in the future and 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 now so like a bento box of incentives that we're programming into the financial system not just instant gratification and the whole thing is that like if we're going to build a world financial system then it's got to be stable and anti-fragile and regenerative and degenerative Degen is fine. Like there could, that can be part of it, but it shouldn't be the whole thing. And so we're trying to take as many degens and hope pill them into becoming regens as possible. That's what a, like part of one of my little side quests with Gitcoin. And I think that you and I are on that journey together. We've talked a little bit, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but we talked a little bit about like how a lot of people enter this space wanting to get rich and like they're like, they're kind of like kind of a knucklehead. And then they get like the, the culture changes it. Like you realize that there's a greater meaning to what we're doing in the Ethereum space. And it sticks and it really resonates. And it's like, I yeah. remember as a technologist, I got into Docker like deep, like I would have gotten into the Ethereum if I wouldn't have gotten into Docker so deeply. Mm -hmm. And so I missed some early Ethereum stuff, but that was me just like tunnel vision on a cool tech that I wanted to dive into. And then Ethereum yeah. was ne next and it was tunnel vision. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, this whole ecosystem, this whole thing, like we're, we're, we're not here to get rich. We're here to build like, the next yeah. web basically so so totally. coordination slaying moloch uh trust experiments you had that little grid up there and it made me think of how good ethereum is at like building these coordination experiments totally. is is this is this kind of part of that like where where does your mind go when i when i talk about slaying moloch 
Oh man, so many. I, there's too many memes. My marketing guy's like, Kevin, <laughs> choose a meme. Is it Regen? Is it slaying Moloch? Are you trying to hope pill these Dgens? I'm like, I don't know. I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do all these things. Um, but yeah, so basically, Moloch is the guard. Uh, is is the the demon lord of coordination failure. And basically, uh, it's you know, like there's obviously no demon lord of coordination failure, but it's fun to like sort of meme it as as like this is basically a demon. It's causing human suffering to have these systems that are set up in a way that is not optimal where people are suffering because they're not figuring out how to coordinate with each other. And like open source software is an example of this, by the way, $500 billion per year in economic value is created by open source, but open source software developers are just working nights and weekends on it because they have their corporate jobs that can pay the bill. There's no business model for open source. So that's like, that's a coordination failure. Um, but there's other coordination failures where like the rational economic equilibrium is different from what exists in the world. And like, I think that like journalism and misinformation is an example of that clean air, clean water, just all these public goods that that could be funded in a more rational world. So anyway, uh, I did a two hour podcast with Bankless about Ethereum being the sword that slays Moloch. And um, and basically like that was just like a deep lore moment for me like oh shit like we can kill this demon lord with ethereum and but like the problem was that it was a two hour podcast so there was like a 40 page blog post about it and so we're trying to meme into existence this idea that ethereum can create a better world and as a main means of making the content more consumable we published this comic book ethereum for public goods which sort of imagines that the ethereum community is a is uh, a bunch of disparate like communities and people working on separate things, but then they come together when they're given the power of coordination and Ethereum, and they can they can fight Moloch once they're assembled and only once they're coordinating with each other. So we can put a link to the comic book in, sh in the show notes. It's it's totally free comic book to to consume. But I'm really into this idea of the Ethereum community coming together and solving coordination failures. So taking that that uh, coordination uh, that that developer stuff. Let's zoom in on developers now and talk about mm. just basically like open source. So, so let's, let's just like get a, get a, just a look at the ecosystem of Ethereum. Almost everything mm. is open source. Almost everything yep. you build is another building block that someone else can build on top of. Right. And it's got yep. money at the, at the protocol. So if we bake mm. in incentives to keep building these building blocks, then this, yep. this is the thing that's going to kind of rise all boats. And, and that's totally. what we, I kind of really want to zoom into here and just talk about our experiments and, and kind of like moving forward. It seems to me like we're about to hit a really interesting thing kind of in, in the developer landscape where all of this composability and this compounding pace is going to like really ramp up and we're going to, yeah. any developer is going to be able to get into the space, grab a few things off the shelf and deploy an NFT yeah. marketplace or a brand new financial mechanic. It's, it's totally exponential. It's crazy. I mean, the composable parts have made it such that you can walk into a hackathon and build something with a two person team that would have taken a bank a hundred people and $10 million to do 10 years ago. And it's because of the composability and the ability to just take things off the shelf. And if you think about all these composable parts as compounding on each other, the surface area of what's possible to build when any new composable part is introduced just grows exponentially because it, it all like multiplies on each other. And, you know, obviously there's more capital in the space too, and that, that doesn't hurt, but it's really cool because I think that, you know, we've got these coordination failures, but now we've got programmable money. And so if we value coordination, if we value open source, then we can program our values into our money and we can build better economic systems. That's like the thesis for, I think, what your and my cl next collaboration is going to be. And let's, I mean, let's, let's really solidify this in a real example, maybe just like a bounty and, and how that works in a smart contract. But basically like mm -hmm. this smart contract is censorship resistant. No one, no one can stop it, right? You, even you who deploys the contract, if you do it correctly, it can't be stopped. Within that yeah. contract are rules of, if you do this, you get paid this. And, and then we mm -hmm. can kind of program that stuff. And that's at a simple level. But then if we start kind of like layering up on that of like, okay, then if this stuff gets created, then this money flows this way, or, you know, streams mm -hmm. of money, uh, certain totally. like oracles on GitHub are kind of interesting. I don't know if we'll get to that, but it's, it's still kind of hard to like read on chain if you did that exact programming work, but we're starting yeah. to get closer to that, that layer, I think. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, the system is evolving and that it's growing a lot and we're starting to see some progress on this stuff, but uh, a lot of what's built in live in the space right now is DeFi 
And, um, you know, I'm big on the internet of jobs. Like how do we take the next tranche of developers and bring them into the space? Yeah, that's right. Oh, I forgot about the charisma thing. Yeah. Let's get more developers in the space. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just saw, uh, I just saw some dude from the NBA, uh, kind of going around top shot and deploying his own, uh, uh, NFT that's based on his performance somehow. And wow. that's the kind of thing that's really exciting. I don't even know if it's on Ethereum. I just saw like a random ESPN feed, but yeah. down the long tail, all these random devs, you don't have to have some centralized thing to like deploy NFTs. You can grab something off the shelf. You can deploy it. You can make a small change. Yeah. You can put in an Oracle that looks at basketball scores. You can do whatever you want. And so I think that that's the most exciting part for me, not the top 10 NFT platforms, but like the next 10,000 NFT contracts that get deployed by weird random developers yeah. uh, and, and artists and stuff like that. Well, it's just so easy to do. I mean, um, I'm, I'm going to show one of my like weird prototypes that I just did. Like um, I just take, I did, I bought for our yes. launch for Gitcoin Dow. I got these, <laughs> I got 250 hacky sacks and I've just been like, by the way, selling all of our swag on the Gitcoin store for like $20 a pop. It, like just trying to get it out there, like total loss leader. And I'm like spending my nights and weekends packing swag boxes and shipping <laughs> them to people and stuff like that. And, and I was just like, kind of like, well, what if I do something different with the hacky sack and I just like tokenize it and put it out there and we put it out there and we just called it sacks, which is like kind of like a Unisox fork. And then I just put it out there and I just dropped the contract address and then I come back to my computer like an hour later and everyone's DMing me like my whole feed is talking about sacks right now, like co tokenized hacky sacks to fund public goods. And I'm like, oh shit, what did I start? <laughs> But um, I, it, I literally deployed this. I was on a call and I was just multitasking and I was like, oh, I might as well like tokenize this and throw it in a liquidity pool. And then I just tweeted it. And then all of a sudden it blew up. And I think we raised like $400,000 for open source through that. So it was it was pretty crazy. And I, and I think like, I, I just want to end by like this little monologue by saying like, Austin, one of the things I appreciate about you is like, you're not, a, you're not afraid to fail and just to like prototype and throw stuff out there and see what sticks. And I think that's so key if we're going to build more experiments that fund public goods. That's yeah, that's so awesome. The, the sort of uh, testing and prod is, is another way to say that, but the prototyping, the mm -hmm. rapid prototyping, the yeah. sure, sure a side chain isn't as secure, but we're going to deploy things to a side chain and we're going to learn how people use them. So when we get yeah. L2, we can just toss that on L2 and it's going to work the same way. All, all this yeah. like prototyping uh, kind of led me to building scaffold ETH and, and hopefully getting other mm. developers to pull down scaffold ETH and be able to take something that's yep. like freestanding. Here we go. I'm going to show. I'm going to show. So you're gonna, we we're trying to shorten the cycle between hypothesis, experiment, and result with scaffold ETH. It's like Ruby on Rails for Ethereum building is sort of how I conceive it. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a, a great way to say it. So let me see. So we've got, uh, I've got a smart contract right here and I have the front end right here. And if I, you know, take take uh, this guy's address and I paste it in here and I just make a public, uh, let's see, address public owner, writing code, way too uh, sloppy. If I hit save and just redeploy that, it's this development loop right here. I'm basically tinkering with my solidity, I'm deploying it, and then my app over here is gonna hot reload with those new changes and we'll see that I added an owner there, right? That, and then like very quickly, I can just say like, that is one hot reload. Then, then I can do like a require that the message dot sender uh, uh, is wow. equal, equal to the owner, right, right? And, and then maybe even throw a, a no message out there. And then we'll push that out there and we'll make sure that only the message.sender can set it. And the way we're gonna mm. do that is we'll bring up a bad guy over here and we'll send the bad guy to localhost. So the green guy is going to be the owner and then the bad guy, this, this purple guy here. So if he tries to set the purpose, it should say, mm. oh, it totally worked. Uh, did I not save it in time? Uh, you gotta, gotta not, test your not smart contract. Not a contracts. hot reload. Not a <laughs> no, hot reload. Not, that, is, that is not hot. Hot, hot or not. I, Let's go. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, guess please. Sorry. No, go for you it. Go. You go. You go. Uh, there we go. Squish. We gotta know. There we go. We got it. That's beautiful. If I do a hello I, over I just here. think it's cool how you're like, you're, you're solving like the generator function of dApps right here. Like how do we prototype more dApps? How do we, how do we get more people spinning this loop faster? And I think, just think that's really such a strong contribution to the space, Austin. And I can, and now we're like, you've like showed everyone your secret. Everyone's like, how does Austin build so fast? And you're like, here's how you build so fast. Build as fast as me and take scaffoldies.
Yep, because um, it's like it's like an app that's freestanding. You take it off the shelf and you make a small change to it. Yeah. Check out the 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 active branches, and then like once all of that is there, there's the incentivization layer, right? That's the build guild, and I think we should get mm. into the work stream too, because it's like very much like the build guild yeah. is probably a subset of what will be this work stream. But basically, mm. streaming to developers to to build awesome things, and and I think that's probably a good segue into. Let me go ahead and stop my share into our work stream. Right? Mm -hmm. do, you want, do you want me to? I'll I'll introduce it. Right? No, no. You you probably have the better. I feel like you have a better context around it. You have I, more charisma. You, you I like if <laughs> I do, do it, this. it'll be like I'll it'll be this. like e Eeyore being like, let's build public goods. You're gonna be like, let's build public goods, <laughs> and I have scaffold ETH and there's build goods. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Austin and I are partnering on a work stream for the Gitcoin DAO. I guess this is just me introducing it, but trying to approximate your charisma. Um, and so basically we have a work stream that is basically going to be a generator function for public goods. So basically Austin brings the tools, the builders, the network of builders, the build guild. Um, I bring Gitcoin DAO and, and I don't know, some memes. And, and basically we're working together to partner to build more tools that are meant to fund public goods. So more, pro more prototypes that fund public goods. And so basically what it is, is just like go to this forum post, which we'll put into the show notes and go to the governance forum and just write a little response here and say like, hey, I'm interested. Uh, this, is my, th this, this, this is my GitHub. And, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to have like a monthly call where we're just going to do demos of different prototypes or like pitches for each other of funding public goods. Uh, they'll probably, if, they get, if the DAO approves, there'll be some amount of GTC rewards or some amount of ETH rewards that'll go to people who do the best stuff. And basically the idea is to build a culture. Oh no, there goes my fancy camera. <laughs> <laughs> There's basically the idea is to build a culture around rapid prototyping for public goods experiments. And what we want to do is build a funnel of pro pro like we have programmable money. We can program our values into our money. Let's build some shit that funds public goods. And then like you take it and grow it and mature it. Like you make it into its own DAO and decentralize it if you want, or, you know, if it doesn't work, then you can shut it down. But basically like celebrating building public goods prototypes together is what Austin and I are doing. Uh, what did I miss Austin? One, one really good example build. So I was thinking about what, what things can, once we get all these builders together and we're building uh, kind of powered by uh, the, the Gitcoin governance token is like, what, what things can we build that would use that? And right away it's like, oh, let's make, let's make, I mean, snapshot exists, like there's other things, but let's make a quick, like, just take the, take the temperature of all the, the voters, like the mood where they just sign mm -hmm. a message. We compare it, like it, it would be pretty centralized, but basically it just looks at your token balance and your current you you set your mood on something like am i feeling mm. hot or not about like a, this like a mood thing? ring for DAOs. Ooh, like, yeah there we go yeah, yeah like, or even like a mood DAO where the DAO can as a whole can give some aggregate mood of how we're feeling towards something but just thinking mm. about random generic tools we could build let's like right off the shelf let's make a let's make a token signaling app that helps people signal with their their token balance and some mm. builder can build that in a weekend with scaffold eth yeah. and we can fund that now right so it's it's about building that substrate that layer to kind of incentivize mm -hmm. this stuff and get this stuff kind of rolling kind of on its own totally. a little bit but it's incentives but i gotta say it's also like one of the things that i know from starting gitcoin in my basement in when no one knew about it was like it was really lonely to build something and it was like is anyone going to care about this and and like and, you know the answer, and the answer in hindsight is yes with gitcoin by five side projects before that where i built them alone and like i've deployed them and people were like cricket cricket and i was like oh this is sad but the whole idea is that we have like a fellowship of builders who are pitching ideas sharing ideas sharing tools and and you know we always talk about using incentives and stuff in the space but i also just think the cultural like building those cultural bonds uh is is one of the things that we're trying to do along with the incentives in this work stream and and there's going to be way more devs like straight up more devs are going to start coming into the space. More devs are going to yeah. learn about Ethereum. They're going to realize that like Ethereum is not another Dogecoin. It's actually mm -hmm. a layer. It's like a decentralized app store that you can build on top of. It's a right? tool that you could use to build Dogecoins. Yeah. In, yes, it's one, it's can, one level up from Dogecoin. You can build yeah. a Dogecoin on a meeting with someone, right? Like mm -hmm. you, you've proven how easy that is. Okay. So how about we end it off with kind of a choose your own adventure. If you are uh, uh, just like, 
if you're watching this call and you're person X, where can you go to get involved? Okay, so first person is a protocol dev. And if you're a mm -hmm. protocol dev, if you're a hardcore meticulous, uh, you know, protocol layer dev, Piper has a really cool kind of apprenticeship program going on. Mm -hmm. Do you, can you even think like, basically if you're at that level, it's like get into the GitHub repos of some of the big projects and start contributing. What, totally. what do you think for, for protocol guys? Yeah, so um, I'm a web developer, which is like, you know, just one level above script kitty. Uh, protocol devs are real serious developers. Right. I was hanging out with some protocol devs and they're like, we run Ubuntu. And I was like, I run a MacBook Pro with Mac OS. All right. Um, right. But yes, uh, Piper Merriam is running a a uh, basically a recruiting program to to staff up new protocol devs. And you can send your resume into that. You can go to Geth, you can go to Prism, you can go to Nimbus, any of the ETH2 clients and just check out their issues, go to contribute there. Um, and, and yeah, protocol devs, we need more protocol devs in the space. So please reach out to myself or Austin on Twitter DMS. If you have any questions about how to get involved. Then a layer up from that would probably be solidity auditors, a thing that is like probably like yeah. the biggest thorn in our side right now in, in the Ethereum community is how expensive it is to get an audit, how hard it is, mm. how much money gets hacked because someone puts message dot sender owner in a public function, just some dumb, some dumb stuff. Yeah. So like next level is like auditors, auditors, like you, you gotta probably go out. You may have to like, I, I, I don't know the exact way. There's a lot of boot camps getting spun up now for auditing mm -hmm. if you'd like to get into auditing. So just keep an eye on that. Again, yeah. hit us up. But I think our bread and butter is the next layer up. And that's basically like product or product builders, right? We're, we're building Solidity. We're using Solidity almost like our back end to our front end, mm -hmm. which is an app that we want people to use. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, I'm a web developer and I would call myself more of like a hacker who likes putting together prototypes and going to market with stuff. And to me, it's very interesting to build a brand and try to market it. And like the, the technology is just like one part of that. And so join our public goods prototyping work stream. If you're, if you're looking to enter the space and just get something off the ground, we can help. We can provide connections, we can provide capital. And I think that I'm just super passionate about taking this foundational layer of transparent economic games that can't be changed on you and giving it to more people. But to do that, we need more things that are actually usable. And that's what Austin and I are trying to, we're trying to solve for the generator function of, of new prototypes in the space. And that's where we can really help, I think. One tiny little thing to lean in there. Uh, I got into this space building a product thinking I was gonna put my heart into this product, but really the product just taught me how to build on Ethereum. It was it was really it was garbage, Ga right? Galileas, it takes, well, Galileas is one of them, but like concurrence even before that, like different products yeah. that I was building, even though you as the developer getting into the space, loving Ethereum, figuring it out, understanding the technology, getting up the Drenning Kruger, all of that mm. together is just your start right? It, you're probably yeah. that product that you're thinking about going all the way to market with is probably mm -hmm. not going to be the product. You'll need to throw a few things aw away and try a few times, right? I, I think totally. that's kind of part of it. Yep. Awesome. I, and this is the like the thing that I think that people can learn from you, Austin, is just like, you're so obviously not afraid to fail. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I like, oh, here we go. Here we go. I have a good, yeah, I have for, a good, uh, not afraid to fail is this this guy here wait why won't nice. come on give me is the that, zoom is there that it the, the gitcoin bot the yep. joker yes yep. um that, the joker it, is it, never it, a fail, uh, afraid to fail how about the king yeah yes there we go we got a gitcoin bot i'm going to show off mine while we're at it this yeah. robot in on my camera is, is a robot learning to love um Aww. and i feel like in a lot of ways uh this is a uh i mean i don't know so like Oh, there he goes. He just he just <laughs> w walked the plank. Um, so basically, like the thing that I that I really admire about you, Austin, is that you're running through peer. Like you have a hypothesis, you do a quick experiment, you get results, and then you know if you fail, you just move on to the next thing. Um, but if it works, then the, this it's asymmetric upside. If you fail, like maybe it's a small hit to your ego and like a take away from your time. But the upside is asymmetric. If you you could create the next build guild, you could create the next scaffold ETH, you could create the next Gitcoin. If you just keep running through that experiment loop. And like, I am on, like, I, I, I try to do this also, like I'm on the seventh experiment in, in like my Ethereum projects. Like Gitcoin is like probably the fifth or sixth project. And then even within Gitcoin, like we, our mission was to grow and sustain open source. And we started with bounties. Turns out people don't care about bounties all that much. And now like we created Gitcoin grants, we created kernel, we created new mechanisms to do it. And it's just going through that, that loop and, and really trying to learn and be honest about what's hitting, resonating with people is, is how we got here. So I actually think that that's a really important point to end on. Austin, you embody that. And I hope that we can spread that culture more, to more builders in the work stream.
Thank you so much. That that warms my heart. And and yes, I, I fail Your like crazy. Heart. <laughs> yeah, it warms my robot yeah. heart. Okay, last last choose your own adventure uh, uh, pr- uh, person is sort of like a I don't know how to code person, right? If you if you want to learn how to code, I think you would suggest maybe like Free Code Camp or some of those. Uh, but also, if you don't want to learn how to code, how uh, there, there's tons of ways that a non coder can contribute to the Ethereum ecosystem. What what things have you seen there, like governance stuff, community stuff? Where where do you think are some of the high leverage places to sort of go tinker if you are not a coder but you want to, you know, help out the Ethereum ecosystem? Yeah, I mean, I think it totally depends on what your skill set is and what you want to do. I actually just posted this post to the Gitcoin governance forum last night that basically says like quadratic shit posters, shit posters wanted. wanted. Like, <laughs> it's time to meme for the public good. Like, we're all internet natives. They're memeing all the time. Like, let's stop just memeing for the lols and let's meme for the public good. Like, come on, let's do something, do something with ourselves. And uh, um, so like, it just really depends on what your skills and interests are. If you're a builder, then build stuff. If you're a designer, design stuff. If you're a writer, then write stuff. If you're a memer and a shit poster, then shit post for the public goods. Like there's a spot for everyone. Me and you are just builders. And so that's just where we come from. But there's there, this is an inclusive movement for everyone across the world who uh, wants to figure out digital ecosystems and building a better world. Just keep shipping. Ship it down down the gutter. Send the send the little boat down the gutter and just keep building little boats. And the one yeah, that sets I'd, sail and keeps floating, that's the one. That's the winner. Yeah. <laughs> I'd think that we're building a boat that's going out into the ocean, not into a gutter. But Ooh, um right, but, of course. But yes, of course. it's a it's a that big adventure. My, my iteration analogy. That's where the gutter yeah. is going. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Eventually the gutter leads to the sea. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin Owaki. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Check out Gitcoin's new uh, whole governance thing. The the DAO. Everything's going on. The robot hearts. The the quadratic lands. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Happy Bowtie Friday. Thank you very much, Kevin. I will throw this up on YouTube. Woo! <laughs> Thanks, Bye, everyone. Man. Make sure you teach a robot to love this weekend. Bye, everyone.